Hello again, everyone. Another message here. This one's from a GoFundMe contribution. As always, I appreciate you taking the time to dig into this, and I think it'll be easier if I just give you the details here. I'm actually, I'll leave his name out, by the way. He did a video on my narcissist problem some time ago. The narcissist always blames you, so there's a bit of background to the story here. As you know, there's a huge problem with women being underreported for sexual abuse and harassment. I'm the victim of this myself when I was eight or nine. I was groomed and molested by a woman close to my family. I think this is especially damaging because there wasn't force, instead more of seduction, for want of a better word. As a result, I felt crushed by guilt, like you've been soiled and ruined, and I pretty much ended up, pretty much ended whatever childhood I had. There were other cases of women, often tenants of my father's rented out basement as it was basically only a second apartment, trying to groom me, but memories are too foggy for me to recall the details. The result of this is that I'm just not able to get closer or intimate with women at all. Whenever, uh, whenever I'm in an intimate situation with a girl, you could say that I get triggered as I start to feel very anxious, agitated, and extremely vulnerable. Sexual intimacy is out of the question for the same reason. And that's probably because you're having problems with women you're actually trying to date is. You were so taken advantage by a woman at such a, a young age that you can't trust any woman. So any woman being nice to you is probably triggering you as being, as being groomed for something, even though it's a normal adult intimacy. Okay, because that's what you were basically being showed. You, you were being showed at eight or nine years old adult in, intimacy, which you're not able to process. You don't know what the hell it is. So this is so damaging. The re, this is so damaging to you because later in life, when you are supposed to be having adult intimacy, you see it as abuse because it's triggering your abuse from what happened to you when you should have been when you should have been playing with GI Joes. And you're right, this is an underreported thing. Or when it does get reported, it's reported as a big as a big friggin' joke. You know, especially if the if the if the woman who does it is a teacher and she's good looking or a cheerleader or or what have you. You know, it's it's a it's a big joke. And this also goes into like sentencing differentials between men and women, you know, how men get sentenced to harsher sentences for the same crimes as women, whereas men go away for years to prison and women will get off with a few months to a year to probation. And it's a big friggin' joke. And when you see these teachers having having gangbangs with their students or having sex with their students or the mothers having sex with with their with 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 the uh, teenagers in their cars and it's like, oh well I would have hit that. I would have dude, it ain't right. And it's not funny because if it was a man, if it was a 35, 45, 50 year old man doing this, it would be look at this disgusting animal, lock him away. And he should be locked away. He absolutely should be locked away. But why is there such a disparity here? Why is it different when a man creates? Why is there such a difference from when a man and a woman commits the exact same crime? And it's not only sexual offenses, it's violence offenses, whether it's domestic violence or, you know, getting in the fights, you know, take the, take that case in South Carolina that's, that, that's going on right now where the girl had the desk flipped over by, by the cop, but I'm not saying anything, whether he was right, wrong, and different, it's not what this is about. That girl was arrested with another girl and a male. The two girls were released to their parents. The male, who you don't see, you don't see the other girl and you don't see the male. The male went to jail and is sitting on, I, I think it was $10,000 bail. What? So I understand what you're talking about, how it either doesn't get media attention or when it does get media attention, it's made into a joke. And then when you're made into a joke, these kids who are made into a joke publicly by the news media, 
Now think about how that's going to affect them later down the road, what kind of normal sexual intimacy they're going to be able to accept. They're not. They're not. My first girlfriend lasted one day before I ended it. Every time a girl tried to get close to me, I figure a way to sabotage or cut her off so I didn't have to deal with that unbearable anxiety. This feels like something that will haunt me for the rest of my life, and the thought of that is pretty scary. Anyways, whatever input you can offer is great, just even talking about it. Nobody seems to care about male victims of female predators, and you're right, and I don't know how you get over that anxiety. I, I, I really don't. Um, that's something that you may need to talk to a, a, a sex abuse professional about, somebody who understands male sex abuse survivors. Um, how you get over that anxiety with this, because the anxiety is going to be there. You could, I could sit here and I could tell you, you know, you got to muster through it, you got to push through it, you got to ignore it. I don't know. I don't know because the anxiety is an uncontrolled emotion. It's an uncontrolled reaction to the situation you're going through. So I don't know how to exactly tell you how to deal with that because you're being triggered by something. And furthermore, we all know those of us who are abused by narcissists, the sexual abuse and, and verbal and physical, who dealt with a lifetime of narcissism, we attract the same type of person over and over and over again. So you need to be able to figure out before you're even thinking about getting intimate with someone, you know, does this, is this person the same as every other woman that I seem to be attracted to or is attracted to me? And, you know, you're really going to have to put them to the test and you're almost going to have to be like the I'm not ready yet type of deal with the woman and you need time. You're really going to have to learn to get to know a woman and take time before you think about getting intimate or moving on into some kind of relationship. And maybe the best way to do that is to explain to these women what you've been through. And you're going to have to do that anyway, because this isn't something you're going to be able to hide. This is something you're dealing with. And, you know, you're, it, that's really the best advice I can give you is to be upfront with these women you seem to be interested in and give it time and say, look, this is going to take time because I have a lot of trust issues with women because, you know, I was sexually groomed at eight or nine years old and taken advantage of and nobody cares. Okay. Society doesn't care. The media sure doesn't care because it's made into a joke. And now they're like, oh, why are so many women having sex with their students? We live in a narcissistic society. I think it's probably always been happening, just maybe not to this extent. You know, you got a generation of, of, of women and, and men too that, you know, it's a new generation who are teaching or in charge who never grew up, never grew up. So they want to try to relive their childhood. Some of them, I think the ones who are teachers, you know, and they, they usually try to go after the cool kids. Those are the ones they try to seduce because probably they weren't the cool kids because they never learned to grow up. They have no stability in their life mentally. They have no mental stability in their life. They have no emotional stability in their life. That's why they do this. And it is very narcissistic. The best advice I could give you is to be upfront with these women um, that you meet and you might want to carry on a relationship with you. Because if they're going to run, they're going to run anyway. You're going to need somebody who's going to be able to understand and support you from the get. So whether you tell them up front or you tell them later down the road, you know, you want somebody that that's going to have some patience and understanding with you. Because lying to them at first or hiding it from them at first and then dropping it later, I, I think it's better to be up front with it. So thank you for your message. I, I, I hope that helps. Um, Everybody else, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think. And again, if you enjoy this channel, please consider making a contribution to the GoFundMe link in the description box so I can help uh, make help this channel grow bigger and we could open it up to some better stuff. And remember, if you do make a contribution and you do want your story made into a video, you, do, you go right to the top of the list and I make you a video the first opportunity I get. This is Ollie Matthews. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all again real soon. Bye.